Okay, let's begin. So welcome to this uh, webinar Wednesday in Arkiwares webinar Wednesday series. Uh, this webinar is titled uh, Media Workflows in the Cloud with Arkiware P5, uh, Workflow Intelligence Nexus and Iconic. Uh, I'm David Fox, that's me down there. Uh, working with Arcuware on webinars and uh, training uh, materials and so on. That's the email address you can get me at. Uh, with me today, I'm delighted to present Jason Purr. Um, he's the founder at Workflow Intelligence Nexus. Hi, Jason. Ooh, Jason, can you hear me? Maybe you're still muted. Uh, yes, thanks for having me on. Sorry, that's the uh, the fun of having a uh, like go to webinar running on two systems on YouTube. Yeah, on yeah, we've today. made it extra complicated for ourselves today by having two different screens that are going to be involved in a demo and so on. So uh, yeah, we'll explain more about that later. So uh, this webinar is going to run for about 40 minutes, we estimate. Um, it's being recorded, so we will share a link, a YouTube link on Arcuware's YouTube channel uh, in case you want to see it or share it with uh, any of your colleagues. Um, we will take questions at the end. So there's a there's a, there's a a questions box within the GoToWebinar interface. So type something in there if uh, you need an answer to a question and we'll answer those. We'll go through all of those and answer them at the end, Jason and myself. Um, so I'm going to begin by talking a little bit about Arcuware for those of you that might not have a lot of knowledge about Arcuware. Then Jason's going to introduce Workflow Intelligence Nexus. That's his product's uh, pro uh, plug-in platform, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and then we will go into a live demo, which we will, previous to the demo, we'll explain what we're going to show you with some schematics. Then we'll show you the products in action that we're going to talk about. Uh, and then we'll wrap up with some questions at the end. So let me begin by telling you a few things about Arcuware. Arcuware is a data management software suite. So it's a software suite that runs on your uh, hardware, the, the host that it runs on, the operating system, and any storage hardware that it's driving is your choice. We're agnostic. We provide within this software suite archive, backup, and replication workflows for your data. We're entirely cross-platform. We run pretty much every, everywhere that software can run, including NAS devices being in the stores for some of the leading NAS products and being available on cloud platforms. And the whole product is set up and configured via a very easy to use web-based administration tool. Um, so we are particularly popular in media-rich environments, and the, much of the focus of today's webinar is around uh, using media asset management with video. Uh, we comprise those four separate modules, which I'll summarize the functionality of in a moment. Um, as said, we run pretty much everywhere. We work with storage from any vendor, and the software you purchase, out, purchase outright, you own the software, and you can keep an annual maintenance agreement active so that you get entitlement to updates uh, and technical support from your local partner. So the four modules that are included within uh, the suite, and you can choose which of these you want to use, are P5 Backup. Let me just get my pointer going here. P5 Backup on the left and P5 Archive. So these two products uh, share support for the same kind of st target storage. So they both support tape, disk, and cloud storage. Uh, tape is very interesting for archive, and that's what we'll talk about shortly with archiving to LTO. Uh, the difference between a backup and an archive is important to understand. So a backup is a copy of all of the customers or all of your important data for the purposes of disaster recovery. That's DR. Um, you don't generally keep backups forever because you don't need to. You just need to be in a position where if you have a disaster, you can recover a recent copy of all of your data. So that's one particular DR workflow. Archiving is something different. Archiving is where you're moving data from your expensive primary storage. That data might be completed project work, for example, and you're moving it to create free space for incoming work. You, the, the, the data that you move, you're going to keep that forever, potentially, so it's designed to be kept for the long term. And we have some asset management functionality within our web interface to allow you to search and see previews and thumbnails of that which you have archived previously. And the archive data can then live on cheap disk storage, can live in a standalone tabletop tape drive or a bigger tape library with automation, or it could live on cloud storage. So that's the P5 backup and archive projects products covered. P5 synchronize is simple replication. It's cloning data from one disk to another, from one host to another, generally over either a local network or a wider area network, maybe between sites or a, a VPN network. 
um, this uh, replication of files and folders from one disk to another allows for immediate failover. You can go and access those files and folders that you've replicated to that other host at that other location. And on top of just keeping one copy, we can keep snapshots and we can keep prior versions of changing files in this, in this replica of your data. So it's a very simple workflow. It can run on a timed schedule, so it runs whenever you need it to. Uh, and yeah, very, very much appreciated by lots of our media customers. Finally, over on the right, I'm not going to talk about backup to go a lot. It's a workstation backup product, allows you to back up a bunch of Mac OS and Windows workstations, whether they're laptops or desktops, back to a central Linux server. Uh, so if that's something that you need, uh, follow that one up via Archiware's website. Finally, uh, on the on the P front side, uh, I mentioned earlier that backup and archive support disk, tape, and cloud. So disk support really means any kind of uh, disk, whether it's a spinning or an SSD, whether it's in an array or it's a standalone drive. Uh, tape support means any vendor's LTO drives from any LTO generation, any vendor's libraries and uh, jukebox autoloader devices, uh, and we can drive multiple LTO tape drives at the same time to give redundancy or additional throughput. So we really have very broad, very sophisticated support for LTO hardware. And finally, over on the right here, we have uh, the usual list of uh, cloud vendors who will sell you the gigabytes per month pricing to store your data in their cloud uh, architectures. So P5 can access any of these different vendors and uh, store your data in either a combination of maybe tape or cloud or disk or just one of those. It's really up to you. So uh, that's my summary of the Archiware P5 product. So I'm just going to hand over to Jason now. Hi, Jason, to talk us through a little background on the Workflow Intelligence Nexus products. Over to you, Jason. Great. Thanks. So Workflow Intelligence Nexus. So at the top, like it says who we are. We are basically an elite team of workflow consultants and software engineers. So myself and my team have been around in this industry for 10 plus years, building automated workflows for every kind of major asset management system uh, you can think of. We've done a lot of work around artificial intelligence workflows, and we've integrated with just about every uh, primary kind of m and &E software on the front end side of things. What we do these days is normally split into two primary categories. We have the wind tool set, which is something new this year, and this is what we're going to be showing you today a little bit of. And the wind tool set is a suite of ready-made tools with a flexible subscription model. And so historically, over the past 10 years, whenever we did any kind of customizations for someone, the standard process was that we come in, we analyze the workflow, we do research, we work with you, we design a custom solution for you, and anywhere from two or three weeks to a couple months, depending on the size and scope of the project, you end up with a powerful custom solution. With the tool set, we have the ability to provide automated media workflows on demand. And on demand, you'll see today, is a very different experience. You can literally start from nothing, Come into our tool set, click a few buttons, and have powerful workflows deployed directly into your system within seconds. So it's all about saving time, money, and effort, and making it as simple as possible and giving the control to our customers so that also you don't have to make super long-term commitments and you don't have to make super large investments to be able to try new capabilities and new solutions and have more flexibility there. On the custom side, we do still do custom work. We're a leader in custom media workflow automation solutions. We have a library of over 30 uh, customizable tools that we've already built uh, that tie into the iconic ecosystem. And within those tools, we have a very rapid turnaround to be able to get those deployed. And then again, we still do uh, complete custom work as well. You can go on to the next slide there, Dave, please. So, <clears throat> This is kind of our ecosystem. Uh, some of the core platforms that we work with are Azure, Google Cloud, and AWS. Uh, a bulk of the work we do these days is in AWS, purely because that's where a majority of our clients tend to sit. Uh, but everything that we do can be deployed to any of these clouds. Um, there's some other fringe ones, like IBM's cloud, we also have deployed into as well. But uh, these are the three primary ones. And then integrations. There's 
a tremendous amount of things we've integrated with. But some of the more common and more popular ones are things like Brightcove and P5 we're going to show today, Rev, which is an automated transcription engine. Veritone is a partner of ours where we've integrated with their AIware software to be able to offer transcriptions and have the ability to offer all of their other AI tools um, in, in the near future. Adobe, we've built uh, Adobe panels for customers and we've built powerful uh, Adobe workflows. Um, so we're extremely familiar in that world. And of course, Iconic. We've done a tremendous amount of work around Iconic over the past two years. Um, so they're definitely a, a big, strong partner of ours. One of the big things about Workflow Intelligence Nexus is that when someone comes to us and asks what we're capable of integrating with, we have a list of what we've done before, but one of the key things about us is that we are very good at picking up new APIs and learning them quickly and being able to get involved with them and get things up and running in those new APIs very quickly. So I would say in any given month, we're usually adapting and adopting about two or three or four new APIs into our tool belt and into our tool set uh, for some of our different customers. Next slide. There you go. Okay. So uh, shall I uh, shall I run through these schematics before you go into the to the demo, Jason? Um, sure. Uh, so what we've got uh, that we're going to show you is a workflow based around Iconic. Now we're not going to give you a full intro to what Iconic is in, in this webinar because it's kind of beyond the scope, and we may do that another time. But Iconic is a cloud-based MAM, as it says here. So basically, Iconic gives you a web-based kind of single pane of glass through which you can view uh, a load of assets that may reside on different storage at different locations. So I've got a London hypothetical London location here with some storage. And I've got a Chicago with some other storage here. So in this workflow, imagine that there are a load of media assets contained on both of these sites. And can, uh, Iconic has been configured to take uh, a, a proxy of each of those media assets and store that in Iconic's cloud, which could be uh, in turn stored in Google's cloud, for example. Uh, and so those proxies live in the cloud, but the original assets reside back on these on-premise locations down here. You could configure Iconic to actually take a copy of the original media file if you wanted to, but more likely you work with the proxies in the cloud. And what that means is over on the left-hand side here, we can have a bunch of remote editors that are connected to Iconic with their browsers, and that gives them the ability to search for a media asset, pull down a proxy, uh, create a project, uh, store that project away in Iconic, and then share that amongst the other editors, and then pull down the original media assets in full resolution when needed to conform and render out the final project. So this is the landscape in which the P5 and the, uh, the Workflow Intelligence Nexus integration is going to sit. So the Workflow Intelligence Nexus uh, paragraph that describes what it does. I've put this up here just because I think this, this is quite clear. It allows you to select any asset or collection of assets and choose an action to archive to ArchiWare P5. This will send the selected item or collection of items to P5 for archive to LTO or disk or, or, uh, or disk to disk archive. So basically it allows you to take those assets that reside in Iconic and archive them in the in the familiar way using P5 and using disk tape or cloud storage to archive too. So the workflow would uh, consist of you selecting some items, and we'll show you this in the live demo in a moment, you selecting some subset of, or of, of items or a project within Iconic, and then those uh, items that you've selected in Iconic are then accessed by the Win software. So let's say in Chicago, we have uh, P5 running on a host where we have a tape drive connected and we have the Win integration running. What that will do is it will talk to Iconic. It will figure out that some of these assets are in Chicago, some are in London, some are in some AWS storage. It will pull all of, all of that together locally and it will archive that to tape. And then it will mark those assets in the Iconic MAM as now being residing uh, as being archived and residing on a tape rather than uh, in, the, in, in the original storage. 
the proxy will still exist in Iconic if that's the way that you're working with Iconic, but the original file can be archived and Iconic will keep track of where it is. And then obviously the restore process is a, is a matter of uh, requesting from within Iconic that you want to recover that asset. So with that explained and visualized for you, Jason is going to uh, move us from London in terms of the screen we're looking at to Detroit where our, um, our US uh, distributor, Pro Video Tech, have a machine that's connected up to some tape hardware and some disk hardware. So, over. All right. And I think you should be able to see my screen now. I certainly can. All right. Fantastic. All right. I see you when I so hear. this is the fun part. What's that? I said, I see you when I hear you. Okay, good. All right. So this is the, uh, the fun part. So what we're looking at here right now is iconic. And I'm just going to refresh the page so we can see that we are looking at a, uh, a current uh, um, refresh of it here. And if I select any of these assets and right click on it, what you're going to see at the moment is all of the standard iconic features. So this is kind of the nothing up my sleeve part of the demo here where you can see there's absolutely nothing pre-configured. Right now, this is just iconic out of the box with all the standard workflows uh, that come with it. So of course, there is nothing out of the box to be able to do this kind of archive. So what we're going to do is come over to the Win Toolset service. So the Win Toolset service in and of itself is a free service. Anyone can sign up for it. If you just go to www.wintoolset.com, you can enter an email address and a password. We'll shoot you over a confirmation link, and then you'll be logged into the service. Once you're in the service, it's going to actually show up like this and ask you to connect your Iconic account. If you already have an Iconic account, you can watch this quick video to show you how to get your Iconic URL, application ID, and auth token. And if you don't, <clears throat> excuse me, and if you don't have Iconic at all yet, you can simply click create account, put in your email address, some basic information, and then when you hit create an account, you'll get a brand new Iconic account with $300 of free credits to start testing it out and playing with it. It is the fastest path to enterprise class uh, asset management you'll ever find anywhere. So once you have Iconic connected and set up, then when you log in the next time or after that happens, this is kind of the view that you're going to see. So you can see all the different workflows that we currently have available at the kind of click of a button, including a couple free workflows. And then you'll also see a list of some of the workflows that are coming in the near future. All of these workflows are workflows that are currently available and can be deployed uh, through a little bit of customization. And you can actually get onto the monthly uh, contracts with any of these just by contacting us if it's not already available yet. But these are all on a roadmap and will all be coming within the next uh, six to eight months, most likely. But what we're interested in today here is this one down here that says Aquarium P5 Archive. So you can see it's 149 a month. If we select this, for a majority of our features, we have a demo capability. You can also see all the details here of the monthly price, and if you scroll down, you can see there's a monthly subscription, a biannual subscription, and an annual subscription that come with different discounts depending on the level that you go. So if you want to just try it, though, you can come up here and click Demo Deploy. There's some instructions that actually goes through a video that explains how to set up what you need to have as prerequisites. The only prerequisites here is that you have to have a local iconic ISG storage configured on your P5 server. So that's going to show up here. And you have to have some Archive P5 plans that are set up to be able to archive to. When you click this instruction, just FYI, it's going to give you a video walkthrough to show you in specific detail exactly how to get all of this information and what the deployment is going to look like and how it's going to work and everything. So in this case, we're going to select our P5 Archive server, and then we're going to select our Archive P5 plans. So, and there. So we have two plans currently in our P5 setup. We have one that's set up to archive to LTO tape, and a second one that's set up for a archive to disk. Once that's done, I'm going to click Save, and then I'm going to click Deploy. So when I click Deploy, this is actually performing all of the setup and all of the integration that historically has been done manually. 
that's it, we're done. The workflow is fully deployed into that iconic environment, and now it's gonna tell me I can download the Toolset app <coughs> for either Mac OS or Windows. FYI, there is a Linux version of the Toolset app that's also available. If you needed it <coughs> immediately, you can get it from our support, um, and it will be showing up on this screen in the next uh, week or so. We're simply doing some additional testing with it right now. So since we're running on Mac, I'll click this Mac OS. You'll see it go ahead and download the DMG file. I'll click Next, and we can see we are now in the demo mode. What does demo mode mean? Well, if you could click in here, it'll show your demo status. Because I have set up C5 on this iconic domain, which is what we're tracking all of the licensing against in the past, it'll show me that my demo status is that I've already archived 10 assets and I have 40 assets remaining. And the demo restriction is that you can archive and restore up to 50 assets in demo mode. So we give you a good amount of stuff to be able to play with here to make sure you understand how it works and really get the full experience. So what gets downloaded if we click on this DMG is a simple drag and drop installer. So you're simply gonna take this iconic tool set application drag it into your applications folder, and then go ahead and open it up. So let's take a look at that right now. So when you open up the Iconic Toolset application, it's gonna look something like this. Of course, it won't say that you've already archived or restored anything. And then in the upper right-hand corner, there's an account login. I'm gonna click on this. And this is where you're gonna log in to the same account that we were logging into in the Win Toolset service. So in this case, the account I logged into is my P5 webinar one. So once I log in, it sees that I have a demo of this feature. And now I can click on settings and I can start filling out my settings. So these settings are all about how we're communicating to P5. So again, a fairly quick setup. If I come back here and I go to my P5 server, refresh the page and log in again here. And go to my archive. So this is going to look for just a couple pieces of information. First, it's gonna ask for a username and password. This actually should be the same username and password you use for logging into the P5 UI, because you can only log into one application at a time with these users. So you simply come over here, click new, create a new admin level user right here, and then put that username and password right here. The host is the IP address of the system. The port is pretty much always 9001. The host name here is actually connected to the host name that you see here under clients. This will almost always be localhost. And then you have the archive plan that is the default archive plan you want to archive to. Inside P5, under archive plans, this is where I can see the ID. So I have my 10002 archive, which is my archive to disk set up as my primary. And then 10001 is my demo archive plan, which is the one going to LTO, which is the secondary one. So I can keep the disk as my primary. And then I have an archive interval and a restore interval, which is saying how often do I want to check for new archive jobs coming from Iconic. My operating system is Mac OS, and I'm running on this local machine. So just so to clarify, this, that, um, the, the, your tool that you're running on this Mac, this Mac has both the P5 software and your tool running on it, and your your uh, your tool basically acts as a gateway between Iconic up in the cloud and talking via the API to P5. So it's checking every so many seconds or minutes against the cloud Iconic to see what, what is being flagged as archive. And then each interval, it will collect all that stuff up and archive it. Yes, that's correct. And it's important to note on the archive intervals, <laughs> what we're doing is whenever you're sending something to archive, from Iconic, we're adding it to a job queue in the cloud. And then this archive interval is saying, how often do we want P5 to be going up and checking that job queue and pulling down new jobs? 
you want to normally keep this set at a higher number, normally somewhere around 30 minutes or an hour possibly, so that when someone sends things to archive, you're going to get a nice big batch of content to send to archive. The reason behind that is the slowest part of the archiving process usually is going to be the LTO machine mounting the tapes that are necessary. It's got to mount the tape, it's got to rewind the tape, it's got to find the right spot in the tape and then start writing to the tape. And you'll see that in the final step of this. So you want to be able to dial in this archive interval to a point that really makes sense so you can capture a group of jobs that get sent instead of just one small job. So again, once everything is set here, we're going to simply click Save. We're going to click Start Job. And now we're going to see our countdown clock here that's going to start, that's going to show us how often it's going to be checking for archiving and for restoring. So now, at this point, everything is fully configured and ready to go. What we're going to do in here is come over and open up our job monitor for P5 so we can see what's happening there and make this screen just a little bit smaller. Come back to Iconic. And now we will refresh this page in Iconic. By refreshing the page in Iconic, now if I select an asset and right click on it, we can see some new features that have shown up. We now have an Archive to Archive P5 and an Archive to Archive P5 with custom archive plan. If we select this one first, it's going to come up and show us an option to be able to choose our plans. Well, as an admin, I might know what these numbers mean and know that uh, the 01 version is my LTO and 02 is my disk archive, but my users might not understand that. So in Iconic, this is just metadata and it's very easy to edit. I'm going to simply come over to my metadata field. I'm going to see something that says win archive plan. And I'm going to take this first value uh, or this first name here and I'm going to change this to LTO archive. I'm going to change this one to disk archive. And you can name these whatever you want. All that matters is that these values stay the same. So I'm going to update that. Go back to my search. Select an asset again. Right click and say archive with custom plan. And now my custom plan will show LTO archive or disk archive. So it's very clear. In addition to that, remember, we don't actually have to do that. If we want to make it simple, we might only have one archive plan. And that's very common, actually, with a lot of our customers. Um, they have P5 set up to do their LTO archive, period. And everything that's going there is always going to LTO archive. So in that case, you can make things really easy for your users. They right click and simply select archive to P5. If I open this asset um, within Iconic, if I can also come up to this menu here and say archive to P5. And if I do that, I'll see a job that's starting here. And if I come over to my admin, I can see that job started right here. So we can see that the job has been started. And actually, if we come over here to P5, we can see the job has already started over here. Now, in this case, we are doing a, a, a disk-based archive of a very small file, so it's very quick. The job has completed. Back in Iconic, it'll take a, a moment for that to actually come up and show us that it's complete because, again, we're polling every couple seconds I, this, this countdown is going here. And there we go. The archive is complete on the iconic side. And now, if I select the job to go back to that asset, we can see a couple things. First off, we see the archive status now shows as being archived. We can see that the source file has, in fact, been removed. And this is an important note. Iconic and the Win toolset and the iconic toolset are not removing that file. The only thing that deletes that file is P5. And that's very important because we want to make sure the file is only removed after the archive system has specifically based, removed it because it knows that the archive was successful. And then the last thing we can check of, out here. Yeah. In the case of LTO tape, that would mean that P5 has written the file potentially to two separate tapes. Uh, 
reread those tapes to verify that the file is correctly written and only then would we delete the file from the storage. Yeah. And then if we come over here to app metadata, we can simply click on ArcWare P5. And right here we can see the restore key, which is the key piece of information we need to know to be able to restore this file from LTL. The status is archived and the volume that it was archived to. So our file is now successfully archived. And just so you can see, we also have the ability if you want to do many files at once, if we came in here and selected a folder of content, we can do the same exact action. And in this way, we could do an entire folder of content all at once. The last thing I'll do is to show you the archive to LTO. I'm going to just select a couple items here. Actually, what I'll do is create a quick collection here for archive. Oops, I was already in the collection. Let me get back here. New collection for archive. And then I'm just going to grab a couple of these assets here and just drag those into my for archive collection. And then from here, there we go. Fine. I'm going to now come down here and say archive with custom plan. And this time, I'm going to select my LTO archive and click submit. So we'll let that one run in the background because it's going to take a little bit more time. But you, what you will see is that it will come up in P5. It's actually already gotten the job. And now we can see this one's going to plan 10001. And now it's going through the process of actually transporting the tape to the proper slot, from the proper slot to the proper drive, and then it's going to go through and um, get everything set up properly. Somewhere in the world, a tape is moving. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that's it for the uh, for the demo. And um, I encourage everyone to also check out our website. If you could go to workflowwin.com under the portfolio section, we have a whole lot of different things that show some of the other workflows that we've done. And if you go to the Wind Toolset service, again, just www.windtoolset.com, everything we did today, you can do 100% for free. You can set up your own iconic instance through us for free, the $300 of free credit. You can deploy the P5 uh, ArcAware archive for free. And if you talk to our friends at ArcAware, maybe they'll give you a a free demo of that to be able to work with as well. So that Excellent. is uh, that's everything I got. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to uh, the slides back on my screen. So you see that okay? Yep. Cool. So that was the live demo. Um, one more uh, thing that we were discussing that's something that Jason's planning on adding to his P5 integration that I wanted you to know about is a future feature here will be, uh, let me just present this so I can point, um, will be the ability to uh, have a couple of, well, you can have one or more P5 installations. So let's say there's one here in Chicago, there's another P5 installation in London. Those P5 installations are pre-existing, so they may be, been, uh, you know, they've been around for years. They've got archive indexes with many assets in there that reside on whatever storage the customers use, tape, disk, or cloud. So the integration is going to be able to actually pick up all of the assets in those archive indexes from multiple P5 installations and insert them into an iconic uh, library such that you'll be able to browse and search across all of that archive data in those P5 installations from within, from within Iconic, and then drive the restore of that data back to uh, a piece of real storage somewhere. So yeah, I, we thought that was a really interesting kind of pro progression for the integration that would allow uh, maybe a company with multiple disparate P5 archive installations at different locations to have a single source to browse across all of those installations, which is not something that's currently possible with uh, the P5 itself, 
with p5 itself you're just browsing each separate installation but this um, integration might will make that possible so thanks everybody for listening final two slides just some details to go to if you want to follow up on the products then we'll look at questions so p5 has a five or 30 day trial evaluation license which is fully functional to allow you to test uh, and trial the product available from p5 .com. there's the URL and then for the workflow intelligence nexus the workflow win is the URL.com and uh, Jason already explained the options there for both trialing uh, the p5 integration but also jumping from that site to get yourself an iconic trial with uh, I think you said three hundred dollars worth of credit on there so that you can you can use it in earnest for a project and see how you get on with it yep that's correct so that's that's all of the content that we've got for you. Um, so let's have a look to see if you've been asking us any questions. Yeah, we've got a couple of questions here. So question from Brandon regards licensing. Um, do I need to license independently P5 Iconic uh, Win Toolkit? So um, the answer is yes. So the, the demo that you saw today, uh, involved three separate products. So there is the Arcuware P5, which you may already have. That's sold, as I mentioned earlier, outright. So you buy that license, you run that on the host that you want to run it on. You buy a license that's able to drive the tape hardware or whatever storage media that you want to archive to. So that's the first step. Then you will need uh, an Iconic subscription. Now there is a generous trial for Iconic, um, as just mentioned. So, and you can sign up for that through the Win website. And then uh, the Win P5 archive integration is sold on a subscription basis, but you don't have to make a long-term commitment. So I think I'm right in saying, Jason, that you have a month, six months, or a year, and pricing um, is 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 you know proportionate to the commitment that the customer's making. So um, that answers that question from Brandon. Um, Mike asks, why do people still use LTO? Uh, that's a good question, a question we often get asked uh, at Archiware. Um, the reasons that people still use LTO as an archiving medium, specifically as an archive medium, is that if you want to um, preserve media assets indefinitely, um, tape is a good storage format because it has a low cost per terabyte. Uh, so an individual LTO cartridge, actually LTO 9, which is coming out uh, in the next few months, which will be the latest generation of LTO, has a capacity of 18 terabytes of uncompressed data per tape. So that's as much as the biggest hard drive I think you can get at the moment. And uh, those tapes are, will be under $100 um, before too long, one hopes. So the, the price per terabyte ratio is good. Also, the, uh, the way that uh, tapes store data it's kind of bulletproof. A hard drive has bearings and mechanisms in it which age over time. Um, a hard drive is a little machine, whereas a reel of tape in a plastic case is not really a machine. It's much simpler. It's not doesn't have to spin when it's not being used. Uh, so they, all those reasons mean that uh, it's quite a robust data storage format. And also it's impervious to attack from malware. The data is truly offline. Uh, it's not sitting on a file system accessible by an operating system. So tape has quite a few advantages. It's kind of perceived sometimes as being old hat, but I think specifically when you think of the way that disks store data, um, a hard drive after 30 years uh, sitting in a safe uh, is unlikely to very, always spin up and, and, and still give you your data back. So. Um, Okay, and uh, last question from Sarah. Uh, do I have to migrate all of my assets to the cloud? Um, no. Um, Jason, maybe you want to say a few words in answer in answer to that question. I guess we're talking about yeah. um, how you transition to using something like Iconic from traditional on-premise storage with, with, with storage on-premise. Definitely, definitely. So one of the beautiful things about the Iconic system is that it truly is a hybrid cloud offering, not a pure cloud offering. And what that means is that the brains of Iconic live in the cloud, the orchestration layer is up there, and you normally have your proxies up in the cloud. But your source media can stay local, not just in your facility, but in many different facilities you may have, wherever they may be. 
And so what happens is that when you configure Iconic, there's a small little application called the Iconic Storage Gateway that gets installed at each of your different locations on each different computer system that's connected to a storage you want Iconic to be aware of. And that ISG is going to scan that content, generate proxies locally, and just push those proxies up into the cloud. Now you can push up your source media if you desire to, but you do not have to, it's totally up to you. And so once you do that, now Iconic is aware of that content. And just like in the demo that we just showed, all of the source media that we worked with in Sensor Archive actually already resided on that P5 server. In most of the scenarios that we've deployed this into, that P5 software is sitting on a server that's connected to a SAM or a NAS that has the primary library of content people are working on. Iconic has scanned that content to be aware of it and present it in the Iconic interface, but it has not moved any of that content. So it's incredibly flexible in that way. And one other quick note to mention, we talked about the, the free credits that we're able to provide with Iconic, but the overall cost of Iconic is important to understand as well, that Iconic, you can get into Iconic for as little as $89 a month for a single admin user. And the only other price on top of that would be things like managing the, uh, the proxies, which is a very low cost um, uh, storage rate for just holding those small proxy files up in the cloud for you. Aside from that, there's no other additional cost for it. So we're talking enterprise cloud asset management starting at less than $100 a month to be able to give you visibility into your archive from anywhere in the world. So that so, $300 credit will give you over three months worth of single user use uh, plus a bit of storage. Correct. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for that uh, excellent answer. Uh, questions just coming in from Hugo. I think the second one might be a clarification to the first. So Hugo asks, when I have a P5 archive and I want to use Iconic, how do I inventory my P5 archive to see what's available? Um, so yeah, that's that's clear, Hugo. So um, yeah, if you've also already got P5 archive, I'm assuming you're, you're saying if I've got 20,000 assets sitting on tape in my P5 archive and I want to start using Iconic, by default, you won't see those archived assets in Iconic. So that's the slide that I showed you recently after the demo where we're talking about an upcoming feature of uh, the, yeah. the Iconic integration, isn't it, Jason? So yeah, and it's important to clarify too how our roadmap for the Win toolset really works. Right. So historically, as I mentioned, we've always developed these things on a custom basis for customers that come to us. And we still do do that as well. This feature is something that we've had planned out. We have a couple different customers who are looking to do this sometime in the near future. None of them have pulled the trigger on that integration at this point. However, because it's all planned out, because it's planned to become part of the tool set service, what we offer is that anytime someone wants to accelerate one of those workflows, all you have to do is sign up for either a six month or a yearly subscription, and we will accelerate that workflow and normally have it deployed into Toolset Service and in your hands within two to three weeks. So when it gets there, as far as roadmap, probably could be sometime in the next month to two months, um, most likely. But if it's something that someone really needs and is really interested in, we can offer it within about two weeks. Yeah, part of the reason for mentioning that uh, that that ingestion of existing P5 indexes is to kind of gauge from our audience um, what level of interest we have in it. So that's good to hear from Hugo that um, he's, he's asking if that's possible. So, yeah. Uh, OK, so uh, unless anybody is in the process of typing in a last moment question, um, I think we're done with the with the content here today. This webinar will repeat in three hours to be a little better timed for our uh, US audience. So uh, you're welcome to come watch it again or, or recommend to colleagues. Uh, but thanks for everybody that's attending now. Uh, we'll send you a link to the video version and uh, also with email addresses in case you have any questions for either myself or for Jason that occurred to you after the webinar.
So, well, have a good rest of your day and uh, thanks again for joining us. Cheers. Thank thanks, you, everyone. Take care.